So let's take a quick look at your notes. All right, here we go. All right, so it says here some background information. Movies are very much a visual medium. Though music and sound effects are important to the experience, the power of film is captured by the phrase, watching the move. Where in the theater should you sit to maximize the visual impact created by film? In this section's exercise set, you will see, uh, possibly only tomorrow, how an inverse trigonometric function can enhance your movie-going experience. So what I want you to draw here for a moment, let's go back to Algebra 2. And if I gave you y equals x squared, what's the shape of this graph? Yeah, Lilia, it's a u, okay? It's a u. We call that a parabola. So I have underneath, and we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit more here, but it says, great question. What are the most important things I should already know about inverse functions? And if you notice, I have my handy dandy tool belt on. And um, one of them, and I showed you this when I just showed you my tool belt, is I have the light switch. And we're going to use the light switch today. When you deal with inverses, what you learned in Algebra 2 is you switch your x and the y values. So in number 2, it says if the point a, comma b is on the graph of f, then b comma a is on the graph of the inverse function. So you literally switch the x and the y. The inverse is do denoted f, and it looks like an exponent, but it's not. It's f inverse. So when we solved an inverse equation, we switched the x and the y and solved for the new y. The graph of the inverse is a reflection of the graph of f over the line y equals x. Number one, we're kind of going backwards here, is the horizontal line test. So I want you to write this down. The vertical line test tells you whether the graph is a function. Okay, the vertical line test, and you learned that back in Algebra 1, I believe, and we reviewed it in Algebra 2. The vertical line test tells us whether the graph is a function. The horizontal line test tells us whether the inverse of a graph is a function. So if I draw the horizontal line through this graph, what happens? What happens if I draw a horizontal line? Yeah. Okay, so if I draw a horizontal line, it crosses more than once. So what I know is the inverse is not a function. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to, in number one, graph y equals sine x. All right, so this is what we just had our quiz on, y equals sine x. So where does sine x go? Where does it start? Zero, zero. All right, so let's label our axes. I'm going to go by pi over 2. So it's zero, zero. At pi over 2, it's 1. Pi is 0. 3 pi over 2, negative 1. And let's do two periods, one to the left and one to the right. And based on what we just finished, we should be really good at graphing our parent function, sine, cosine, and tangent. So if I draw a vertical line through the sine curve, is the sine graph a function? Yes. Now what happens when I draw a horizontal line through it? It fails, and it fails miserably. It's hitting it infinitely many times. So what I want you to think about is where could I chop the graph so that maybe a piece of it would pass? Because here's what we need. 
in math, there are problems that we need to be able to solve using inverse sign. So like mathematicians said, okay, this is a problem that the inverse is not a function. But how could we create a part of the graph that would meet the horizontal line test, that would allow us to have an inverse? Because there's lots of real world problems that we need to use it. So where could I chop the graph and then that piece would pass, what's the biggest piece that I chop that would pass the horizontal line test? Max, what do you think? So pi, so zero to pi? Yeah. Okay, what happens if I go zero to pi and I draw a horizontal, horizontal line? Yeah, Lillian? Okay, 0 to pi over 2 would certainly pass, but that's not the biggest chunk. I, I want a bigger chunk. Yeah, Will? Negative 2 pi to negative No? Oh, negative negative pi. 2 pi to negative pi, that's going to fail. Oh, negative 3 pi to negative 3 pi. Pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. Okay, there we go. What if I chop from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2? Hey, that passes, and that's the biggest chunk. All right, so... Do you understand, though, that there are infinitely many chunks that I could chop off? So what mathematicians agreed upon is they said, well, we want it to be around the origin. So they said, we're going to agree on the chunk, the chopped piece from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay? Now, let's think about the tool in my tool belt, my light switch. So if we're going to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, let's write down what those three points are. That's negative pi over 2, comma, negative 1, 0, 0, and pi over 2, comma, 1. And here's where everything we've been doing with our trigonometry is coming together. Okay, We've been graphing, and we've been doing unit circle values, and so they're not going away. So don't think... Oh, I'm done with that quiz. I, I don't need to know that anymore. Um, we're still using it. We're going to use it for a good three more weeks. And then it comes back again. All right, so if I want to look at the inverse, and the way we're going to write it is y equals, and we read it as inverse sine of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the x and the y value. Okay, I'm going to switch the x and the y values. So let's make a grid here. So notice on my x-axis, I have negative 1, 0, and 1. And on my y-axis, I have negative pi over 2, 0, and pi over 2. So let's plot our three points. Here's negative 1, comma, negative pi over 2, 0, 0, and 1, comma, pi over 2. So this is the graph of the inverse of sine. And notice... If I draw a vertical line through the inverse that I've drawn, it passes the vertical line test. If I go back to my chopped piece from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, it passes the horizontal line test. But what's going to be the, one of the most important pieces is that inverse sine, the agreed upon chopped region, is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. When you're ready, let's flip. And what I would like you to draw at the top of your paper, if you can squeeze it in, I, I'm hoping you can, or there's a little bit of room beside the y equals cosine x graph. I think you have space there. Um, can you draw this chart for me? Okay, so when you're ready, at the tippy top, see if you have space to get this chart in, and I'll pause it. Because in a nutshell, 
Okay, in a nutshell, these are the main first quadrant unit circle values. So you want to put theta is 30 degrees, which is pi over 6. 45 degrees, which is pi over 4. 60 degrees is pi over 3. And then, if I'm doing the sine of each angle, All right, so in the box, it says the inverse sine function. The inverse sine function is denoted S, and it has, it looks like an exponent, but it's not, is the inverse of the restricted sine function, y equals sine x, where that x is restricted from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And I'd like you to put a box or a circle around this piece here. This is really important. It says, if y equals the inverse sine of x, then it's also true that the sine of y equals x. So what that means is the answer to an inverse sine is the angle. So let's look at an example one. It says, find the exact value. Exact value means no calculator. So the next quiz we'll have will be predominantly no calculator, like not even OGT. It'll, it'll be simple enough that you don't need any calculator. So in letter A, when I want to find inverse sine of radical 2 over 2, the answer is an angle. So I like to rewrite these as at first when I'm first learning them. So if I have sine theta is radical 2 over 2, now the big idea here is my answers are between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So what that means, here's 0 to pi over 2, and then from here to here is 0 to negative pi over 2. So inverse sine is first and fourth quadrant, but between, so I can't say 11 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6 is not an angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So it means I'm going to have a positive rotation, 0 to pi over 2, and I'll have a clockwise negative rotation, 0 to negative pi over 2. The reason why, okay, the reason why it's negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 is the top that's around the origin that mathematicians have agreed upon to get it the inverse to pass the horizontal line test. All right, so sine theta. So I'm going to look at the chart I asked you to write down that I had on the chalkboard. Sine theta equals radical 2 over 2. So what's theta? 45 degrees. And you guys, 
Because it says negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, we keep it in radians. Okay, we're going to keep it in radians. 45 degrees is correct, but I want you to just take 5 seconds and change that to pi over 4. All right, letter B. If I have inverse sine of 1, the answer is an angle. So if the sine of theta equals 1, well, that's not on the chart. It's on the unit circle. Between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, what angle of rotation is sine equal to 0? Or I'm sorry, equals 1 is pi over 2. You are correct. All right, let's try another one. In letter C, the answer is an angle. So I'm looking for the sine of one angle equals negative one half. So here's what I think about. I think about what's my reference angle. On my chart, the sine of what angle in radians is one half. It's 30 or pi over 6. Now, I need this, though, all students take calculus. Pi over 6 is not negative 1 half. The sine of it is not negative 1 half. I need to do a clockwise rotation into the fourth quadrant. So it's negative pi over 6. All right, how about letter D? Inverse sine of negative radical 3 over 2. So if you don't know your chart, like at this point, you should have these values pretty much memorized accidentally. So theta prime, my reference angle, would be 60 degrees or pi over 3. <coughs> because it's negative, this is into the fourth quadrant. So it's negative pi over 3. All right, go ahead and, in Roman numeral 2, sketch the parent graph of y equals cosine x. I'll give you a head start, and I want you to do two period lengths. Do one to the right and one to the left. label pi and 2 pi. I'm going to go by pi over 2's. Cosine starts at 1 for the parent function. Then I'm going to continue the pattern to the left. Alright, so again, y equals cosine x is going to fail the horizontal line test. But where could I do a chop around the origin that would make this pass the horizontal line test? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to chop between 0 and pi. All right, so now we need to pause a moment because this is where it's going to get tricky. Inverse sine was negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, but cosine, its inverse, is 0 to pi. They're not the same. I don't expect you to memorize it, but I think when you do it often enough, you inadvertently memorize it. But you can always go back to the parent graph and say, where can I chop it around the origin, or that it includes the origin, and that will tell you every time. So I prefer that you reason it out instead of memorize it. All right, so let's write down those three points. I have 0, 1, pi over 2, 0, and pi negative 1. So what we're going to do is for my inverse... I'm going to switch 
the x and the y values, and then let's plot them. Now the big idea for the inverse cosine is that it's between the first and the second quadrant from 0 to pi. Okay, so this is the one we're going to struggle with because inverse tangent and inverse sine are the negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. But inverse cosine is 0 to pi. So let's go ahead and look down at example 2 then. It says find the exact value, so you should not touch your calculator with this, okay? Do not touch the calculators. So letter A, inverse cosine of negative radical 3 over 2. So that means the cosine of what angle is equal to negative radical 3 over 2? Well, if I look at my chart, if I don't know these, I can jot my chart down. And invert or cosine of 30 degrees or pi over 6 is the reference angle. But inverse cosine is 0 to pi. So I want it to be 30 degrees away from the x-axis, but I need it to be in the second quadrant because all students take calculus. In the second quadrant, cosine would be negative. So my answer is 30 degrees away, that's 150 degrees, but I can't write my answers in degrees because it says they're supposed to be 0 to pi radians. So that's 5 pi over 6. All right, I'm going to pause a moment, and I want you to try B, C, and D. See how far you can get ahead of me. I'm going to start with letter B. If I want inverse cosine of 1, again, it has to be between 0 and pi. So that's going to be 0. Okay, do you guys get that? 
on the unit circle, yeah. Okay, it can only be zero because look, the outputs, remember where we chopped. You're absolutely right, two pi, the cosine of two pi is one, but when I'm doing the inverse, it's only between zero and pi. Great question. All right, then letter C, the cosine of one angle is radical two over two. So that should be pi over four. And the last one, the inverse cosine, and you, and I'm really glad you you asked about that because you guys, um, what we're gonna we're gonna spend three days on inverse trig, then we're gonna move to solving trig equations. Solving trig equations don't have these restrictions on them, so it depends on what you're starting with. Because this, if I had started with that equation, like here, cosine theta equals one, I would have done zero and two pi. Okay, but that wasn't what I started with. So it started with an inverse. All right, so on this one, theta prime is pi over 3. So that means I'm in the second quadrant 60 degrees away, which is 120. And I have to put it in radians, which is 2 pi over 3. All right, questions on inverse sine or inverse cosine? Um, so like, with when it's like in the quadrants, okay, I don't know if this works for, does this work for every single one where it's like the first thing you get like is five or six, and then you just basically like, for the inverse version, you just like take one short of it being one, so it's like that one's five pi over six, that one's pi over three, and that's two pi over three, so they both like one away, it's in the middle. Is that the case with all of them? Or um, well, that's a great question. What about this one? Well, let's see if that is the, what's happening, because I see exactly what you're doing. What if I add inverse cosine of negative radical 2 over 2? So let's do a new one together, guys. Okay, Inverse cosine of negative radical 2 over 2. So that would be the cosine of theta is negative radical 2 over 2. So the reference angle is pi over 4. But I need to be in the second quadrant, pi over four away. Isn't that three pi over four? Yeah. yeah, so it didn't work. Okay, it didn't work. Or no, it did. It did oh, work. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, what you're I right. said. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's how I'm doing. Yeah, then do that. Yeah, that's okay. Right. That's, that makes it really easy. Yeah, and well, let's think about it, okay? Ethan's asked a really, really good question here. If you're at pi, and so say it's with a pi over 6. Like the, Let's talk about why it works. Pi would be 6 pi over 6. And so you're taking 1 away. And if I'm at pi, that's 4 pi over 4, you're taking 1 away. If I'm at 3 pi over 3, I'm taking 1 away. So yes, that's excellent. Yeah, good, good observation. All right, when you're ready, let's flip. And the last thing we're going to do is inverse tangent and then stop there. Okay, so I'm going to pause and give you a head start on graphing y equals tangent x. Okay, go back to the parent function. tangent, I'm going to go by pi over fours, and we've learned how to graph tangent two weeks ago. So I have a vertical asymptote at pi over two, negative pi over two. Tangent negative pi over four is negative one. Tangent zero is zero. Tangent pi over four is one. Now, there are infinitely many periods for tangent. So when I do the horizontal line test, it's going to fail. Okay, however, around the origin, 
I can chop it, and I want you to notice there's a difference here between inverse sine and inverse <coughs> tangent. In inverse sine, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 are included. On inverse tangent, the negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 are vertical asymptotes, so they are not, in fact, included. They're not included in possible answers for the angles, for your outputs. All right, so let's label our three points. It was negative pi over 4, negative 1. We had 0, 0, pi over 4, comma 1. If you're struggling with just y equals tangent x and graphing it, get into math lab right away. Come to office hours. Um, we are going to go through this nice and slowly, but if any of what I'm doing on your parent graphs, that's what you're supposed to know now. And if you're having difficulty with it, you need to get in and get some extra help and get it clarified. All right, so now if I want to do the inverse, I'm going to switch the x and the y's. So I'm going to have negative 1, comma, negative pi over 4, 0, 0, and 1, comma, pi over 4. So now, let's make a grid, a coordinate grid, to graph this, and if tangent, if the tangent of x has vertical asymptotes, what kind of asymptotes do you think the inverse of tangent will have? Horizontal. Horizontal. You are correct. So let's plot these, negative 1, negative pi over 4, 0, 0, 1 comma pi over 4, and then we're going to have these vertical asymptotes, not vertical, excuse me, we're going to have horizontal asymptotes at the pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. So does the graph pass the horizontal line test on the tangent? No, if it's if you draw the actual tangent graph, which has infinitely, infinitely many periods. But if we chop it, we can get it to pass. Okay, if we chop it from negative pi over two to pi over two. All right, let's do example three, and then look at my in a nutshell, and that's where we're going to stop today. We'll finish it tomorrow. Example 3 says find the exact value. Exact value means no calculator. So I'm going to pause a moment and I want you to try A, B, C, D on your own. Okay, try A, B, C, D on your own. Yeah. While you're working, I am passing out tonight's homework. This is due tomorrow on both sides. Okay, both sides due tomorrow. It really will take about 20 minutes. It's, it looks like a lot, but if you know your exact values, it actually goes pretty quick. And I'm going to do uh, two or three of them with you. Okay, so... When you're doing inverse tangent, and it's restricted negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, let's pause here a moment, and that is the first and the fourth quadrant. So if you look down at my in a nutshell, so inverse sine and inverse tangent are both first and fourth. But inverse cosine from 0 to pi is first 
and second. Okay, this is really important for you to keep track. <coughs> okay, look at my in a nutshell. Inverse sine is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, which is first and fourth quadrant. Inverse cosine is 0 to pi, which is first and second. Why? We, remember the chops. Remember where we chopped it to get the parent function around the origin to pass the horizontal line test. That's where it's coming from. And inverse tangent, we chop between negative pi over 2 pi over 2. Notice this is not a typo on my part. They're not included because there's actual vertical asymptotes at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 for the parent function. All right, so we're ready now for example three. If I have inverse tangent radical three, that means the tangent of one angle is radical three. So if you look at your chart, that's 60 degrees or pi over three. Letter B, inverse tangent negative one. Well, my reference angle is pi over four, but I have to be between negative pi over two, pi over two, so that's going to be negative pi over 4. Letter C, inverse tangent, radical 3 over 3. So that's positive, so it's first quadrant, and it's pi over 6. And the last one, inverse tangent of 0. Okay, bummer, that's not in the chart. But from... Negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, so that's here, and it's not at pi over 2 or negative pi over 2. Tangent is sine over cosine, so that's going to be 0 radians. All right, so what I would like you to do is take a look at the homework